Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where you're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. And we're almost at a thousand subscribers. I can't believe it guys. This has been a dream come true. I've been working just ever since the beginning of this year to get here. And I can't believe I'm this close. So actually this video is inspired by a lot of my commenters. So a lot of people have been commenting asking for an API only app using Ruby on Rails. And here's a good example from one of my last videos from yesterday. This person asked, create one more tutorial API only application. So here's like a few things that they want to see in the app. Authentication with JWT. So no device for users. Okay. Mailer API with sent one time password from Twilio. Okay, interesting. Pagegem, Geocoder, Sidekick. So I don't even know how a lot of these would work. Um, how does this work in an API only? I guess pagey makes sense because you only display like a certain amount of records and then they could just hit the URL again. I haven't built an API only app for a while. So this is honestly going to be a challenge, but it's going to be fun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to create an app that uses at least most of these functionalities if I can get it to work. And then we can implement this. And I want to show you guys how you can build API only apps. And then possibly we could integrate with the front end. Even though I'm not even that familiar with those front end libraries. I have used React before. I don't really like it. But we could try it out and see like is that enjoyable? Is it not? And then we could just talk about like what we like, what we don't like. And we could also think about re-implementing with Hotwire. Yeah, this can be an awesome video guys. I hope you're excited. Let's get right into building an API only app. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the console. Now I'm using Ubuntu on WSL. So it always takes a second to load. I'm just going to open up this console and then we can get started with generating our app. Alright, now that the console is loaded, I'm just going to come inside of here and I'm going to create a new Rails app by typing Rails new. Oh, also guys, for this idea, I thought it'd be cool if we could just do a normal or a basic social media app. So that means we have user accounts, we have posts, and that's basically it. Maybe eventually we could do favorites or likes on the posts, if you could like other people's posts. But mostly we're just going to add user accounts and then posts, and then we're going to have the authorization. So like a user can only update a post if they own it, and they'll have to sign in with the JWT json web token so that's what somebody is asking for so let's try to build this so the name of the app is going to be i don't even know what to call it like social api just call it that and i'm going to do a dash d set the database to postgresql because i always do that and i usually do dash c for tailwind but because we're not doing front end it's no styling it's no html it's no front end it's api only and if you guys aren't familiar with apis it's an endpoint in your app, or it's like a URL that just routes to the controller, and then in the controller you would return JSON, and then any other front-end library, like JavaScript libraries, could create their own UI for that data from the JSON API. So that's basically how it works. Now, to use an API-only Rails app, there's actually docs. So if you look up Ruby on Rails API-only mode, we should be able to find some information about it. So there's actually a whole section on Rails guides about API only apps. There's like a bunch of answers, you know, for different things. Now I want to see creating a new application. Okay, this is how you do it. You have to do dash dash API. And this will set up our API only, so it won't generate any views. I'm going to generate this right now. Dash dash API. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm actually already excited just because it's, it's a challenge. It's different. I usually build apps with front ends so I can see like what's going on. That's usually where I start is in the front end. But this time it's going to be all back end. Okay, so now the app is finished generating. I'm going to CD into our app and then start the server. Actually, we're not even going to use bin dev either because there's no front end. So we're just going to start the server with Rails S. Whoa. Rails S, which will start the server on localhost 3000. 
That's by default in Rails. Now it says it's listening on port 3000, but if we go to localhost 3000, I don't think there's anything, right? Well, actually, it's telling us we need to create our database. I'm going to press create database. All right, and actually, we still see the Rails screen, so that's cool. We have, like, the basic view, which means our Rails app is set up, and it's working. It's also running, but there's, there's really nothing we can view. Like, we're not going to be able to set any views up, but we can open the code up. Let me just take a look at it. So I'm going to do a code dot to open the code in VS Code. And I just want to see what's different. So we still have all like the main files that I would expect in a Rails app. And if we go inside app, we actually do have views too, because we have the mailer views. Interesting, because probably mailers you'd still have in your Rails app. You wouldn't put those on the front end, I guess. I don't know. And we have models, there's nothing there yet. So everything kind of looks the same. Oh, there's no JavaScript folder. I just noticed, that's crazy. It's really just an API only app. And if we go into controllers, we have application controller. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and just create our first controller. And I don't even think I'm gonna do a scaffold for this because I don't really know. I'm just gonna do it by hand. And I feel like that'll be a good experience for you guys to watch too. So I'm going to create a controller, which is going to be the user's controller. I'm going to put in a file name, user's controller.rb. Inside of here, we're going to need the class for the user's controller, which will inherit from application controller. Now we can just make our first row, which will be like def um, for the users. Why don't we make a create user endpoint? <clears throat> so this is going to be something that we're going to hit to create new users. And we could pass in like an email and a password. So that's what we'll expect. Like email, password. We could get those through. I think we can even do secure params. So I'm going to do a private method down here. And then create a user params method. Let's do params dot require user permit the different attributes on the user. So let's say like an email, a password. Actually, would we even generate a password? I don't know. With JSON web token, we'll have to figure this out. Uh, I feel like we'd still pass the password. So email, password, first name, last name, all these different things. And then inside of here, we could actually create the user account. Right now, I'm just going to render JSON. Uh, message user was successfully created. So this is how you this is how you return a spot a response to an to a web request. I guess you could just render JSON. That's usually what I see in API apps, and you could return whatever you want inside the JSON. That's kind of the cool part. And now to test out our API. We can actually do it from the terminal. So if you guys have curl installed, which usually it's installed on Ubuntu. If not, you can install it by just looking up like how to install curl. I know for Mac, you have to do it with homebrew. So you do like brew install curl. For this, it's a little bit different, but usually you get curl through the other installations that you fall. But with curl, we can test our API. We can use curl to make a request to localhost 3000 slash users. It said fail to connect to localhost. Okay, so actually, I don't even know if we have a route to find yet. So let's go to our config routes to RB. Oh yeah, we don't have anything in here. So we need to set up routes to enable those URLs to connect to the controller. So I'm going to add a resources for users. And I'm going to do only create because we only have a create action yet, like this far. So eventually we might have more actions, but for right now, I'm just going to limit it to create. Now, if we come back here, we should be able to make the curl request, but still not working. I think we need to make a post request because by default, curl should be making a get request. I don't even know how to do that. 
I barely work on API. So it looks like you can do dash x, dash x, post. I feel like I did that right, but it's still not. Oh, maybe I need all caps. Dash x post. Hmm. Are we even getting anything in our... Oh, we're not running the server. Look, because I'm doing all of the commands here. But I forgot we have to actually run the server to do that. So what I need to do is I need to run the server right here. And then I need to go and create a new terminal. And then I can do the curl from there. The curl x post. And then we're going to post to localhost 8000 slash users. And as you can see, we got the message back. See, this is exactly what we were rendering inside of the console or inside of the controller. On the def create action, we're rendering this JSON. And now we're getting it back in the terminal. So that's awesome. So already our API is working. All right, so this is pretty cool already just to see like what you can do, you know, using APIs. You can really connect to like multiple programming languages. So you can have apps built in one programming language that uses Ruby as a backend through an API. So I pretty much, I think that's pretty cool. But now if we want to actually do the functionality, like creating a user with these attributes, first we need to add those. First we need to set up a model for users. So I'm going to do that right here in the console. I'm going to do a Rails G model. So instead of a scaffold, I'm going to do a Rails G model, which means it's only going to generate the model. So that's what I want. So I want a user model with the email. Let's, wait, can you do type email? <laughs> no, I think it's just type text. So you have email. We have a password. Which actually, password might have to be something special, like encrypted. Encrypted attributes, or actually, we're supposed to use bcrypt for secure password. So I'm gonna look up has secure password real quick. That's a method in Rails. See, so it adds methods to set and authenticate against the bcrypt password. So what you need to have is the underscore digest attribute. So we wouldn't want a password attribute. We'd actually want a password underscore digest. And we're going to have a first name and a last name. All right, and that should be good for the user model. Oh, <laughs> and I forgot I'm not even inside of the directory right now. So I need to CD into, what do I call it? Social-API. All right, and then I'm going to generate the model just like that. We have the user model now. And I can migrate it with Rails DB Migrate. So now to create users through the API, that's like the next step. We would add to the create action user equals user create pass in the user params and then we could just check if user dot save then we could render this json else we render issue saving user but another cool thing is we can actually pass in the attributes about the user. So we can pass in like the errors, user.errors. And I think we just want to turn it to JSON. Or maybe we can just pass in the array. So we might be able to pass in errors. But I want to do full messages. And then for the user, I just want to also like, instead of rendering a message, I'll just render the user. So we can say user to JSON, or I think as JSON will work and it will return all the attributes about the user. So let's test this out now. Now with curl, I don't even know how to add in the parameters or like the body. Curl set body. So we might want to use another tool for testing our API. There's another tool called Postman, which is the whole, the Postman is like a whole app. You don't need to know anything about the console. You can just use this front end app and it kind of does teach you about the web request eventually. But the only thing is you do need to sign in with the account. 
but it's free. So I guess let me download the Windows app. I'll sign in and then we can use Postman to test this API. For right now, let's see if we can pass in a body. Uh, so we can do request host. So maybe we can do something like this. Although header, we need the header too. We need like this whole thing. So let's get rid of the dash x parameter back there. And let's add in these. Just like the header, JSON, request post. And then inside of here, we can put our stuff for the user. So it looks like they have a special format they want. We wrap each key inside of a string. Say like email. We have to do, yeah, we still have to do a colon. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I accidentally pressed enter. Oh, wow, we got a lot of stuff back. That's that's pretty funny. All right, that's why, I do, <laughs> that's why I don't do stuff from the console that much, because this is crazy. Or maybe we have to put the URL last as well. I don't know. The legal format. Look at three thousand slash users. But it's still saying like missing URL or bad illegal. Okay, that's weird. Let's just use Postman then, because it's gonna be easier. The only thing is we need to log in with an account. I'll just use like my email, I guess. Sign in with Google. Alright, just like that. We're logged in and we can use Postman. Postman is so much easier to use to test your API. So what we'll do to use Postman, we'll press the plus icon to create a new request. You can actually save your request in like a history and then come back to them, which is kind of cool. So for the method, we're going to do a post request. We're going to go to localhost 3000 slash users. Now for the headers, we probably want that JSON header for content type. So we can set the key content type and then we'll set the application JSON key. So I'm pretty sure this just tells the web request that it's gonna pass in JSON for the body, which might be important. Also, we might not need this if we're just using a regular body. Yeah, I never have to usually put content type. Oh, cause I think it'll automatically do it if you do form data. Although I think form data is not JSON. But basically, if you come over here to body and set the form data mode, you can put key values, which are then able to be read inside of here, just like the body parameters, like the request.body. I don't know if it uses JSON or not, but let's just add in stuff. So we're going to do an email. I'm just going to do this little like fake email. We can also do password. Maybe first name, and we can do last name. So these are all the parameters. And let's try it out now. Let's send a request. It looks like her am is missing user. Oh, I forgot about the in the controller. I said that we were supposed to namespace it in the user. So like there should have been two levels of JSON. First would be user, then that attaches to the parameters of all of these like user attributes. But right now, if you look in the console, we're getting this parameters. We're just getting all of them on the main level of the hash. Which I don't even know how to namespace like multiple attributes. I think we'd have to change the key. So you have to do like a user and then put the thing inside of an array. I think that would work. User password user first name although I feel like there should be an easier method to do this let's try it now so we sent the request we got unknown attribute password for user oh because we're trying to set this password but we we're supposed to have the has secure password on the model which I never added yet so let's go to the models the user to RB you have to add the has secure password method 
situation. I was reading about it over here on the docs somewhere. So it has secure password. It'll let us save a secure password, which won't be able to be read. Oh, we also need the bcrypt gem. Let me go to the gem file. I think we don't have bcrypt. We actually need to uncomment this line right here. I'm going to delete the comment. And now we're going to have bcrypt. But quickly, I just need to stop the server and run bundle to install that gem. I'm pretty sure bcrypt... Oh, I just tried to start the server with bin dev. Let's restart with Rails S. But I'm pretty sure bcrypt is just used for generating hashes. I'm pretty sure. So it, it like takes some text and it just like hashes it into something crazy. Yeah, it's a cryptographic hash function. Bcrypt is pretty cool. It was actually created a long time ago. Interesting. That's cool. All right, so now we have that set up. I'm going to try to redo that request, and I think it should work now. We sent the request. <gasps> Look what we got back. We actually got all of this data back from the server, which we're, we're getting the password digest as well, which we might not want to include. We probably only want to get like a certain amount of attributes back from the server. I don't know. We could do that because in the user's controller, as you can see, we're calling this as JSON method. You can actually override that method inside the user model. So we can go inside of here, we can make a def as JSON. Now, I don't know if as JSON expects any parameters. Let me look it up real quick. I guess it's expecting the options. So if we say root true, it actually includes the model name. So it does like the outside. That's cool. Oh, and you can actually pass in an only. So I guess that's what I want to do anyways. We could override as JSON or we could just pass in like an only method where we just pass it in like email, first name, last name. I don't know if we want the ID either. That might be helpful if we ever need to like pass into the server an ID of a user. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyways, at this point, if we call this again, it would just create more than one user, which I forgot to add, but we should validate that each user should only have like, or the email should be unique for each user, right? So you shouldn't have more than one user with the same email because that would just mess up the system. So I'm going to quickly add that validation on the user model. So I think to do that, we can say validates uniqueness of, and then pass in the email. I'm not sure if that's right, but we can, now we can actually test it again. So let's send another request. Boom, we got the errors. Email has already been taken. So that did work. And if we go into the Rails console too, by typing Rails C, we can look at that user last. And this is our user that we created. It has everything set up and we can actually sign into the user account too by using the correct password and then authenticating. So we could do like user last authenticate method. That's going to expect like the password. So we're passing a password. This was the password I set. And as you can see, it returns the user model, which means the authentication was correct. All right, guys, this is already pretty cool. We created ourselves a simple API where we could post to it to create a new user. So there's definitely other things that we can do. We can add in since we're making it social media, we can think about how we want this to work. So maybe, I don't know, we could do a get request to the users and possibly return all of the users. So forget about the form data. We could just turn that off and we could try to set up this another row, which right now we don't have anything. If we made a request, a get request to the same URL, it would just say that it's not found. There's no row matching that because it's a different format. Instead of a post request, it's a get request. But we can add that path right now by going to the user's controller. Let's define an index action. 
and then on the index action, let's just render JSON of user all. Now I think we want to do like a map JSON, just like this. Then we could just return things look like this. So it's like a hash with the users key, and then we'll just pass an array of all of the different users as JSON. Actually, this has to be as JSON. Now this little function, this is the keyword in Ruby using the and sign. It allows you to run like a method. So in our case, it's as JSON and you need the colon as well. It'll run this on each thing in the iteration. So map is always going to iterate through each of the items. But yeah, this is kind of just like a simple way we can do this. And then also the last thing we have to do is go to config routes to RB and add index to our only block. So we're like we're only setting up these different actions. Now we're going to also allow the index. So we'll have a route for or we'll have a route for that. And now if we try to send that request one more time, we should see that we get this whole collection of all the users. Now again, we might not want to include like all of these attributes. We might only want to give like the stuff that we know is fine to share with people. So this might just go back to again, we could go and um, let's just override as JSON, honestly. So we don't need to do this customization here. Let's just go to the user model def as JSON. And then we're expecting options keyword. And what we'll do is we'll do super options. So super in Ruby is a way that you can basically get like the previous definition. So if you're overriding a method like we are here, super means like go to the previous defined. So whatever it used to be. So do that code in there. And then at the end of it, we could just say like except and get rid of things that we don't want to have like password digest created at updated at I don't know if we even want to if we want to have those or not but let's try this again so I send the request we actually get an error wrong number of arguments in as JSON interesting given zero expected one Oh, maybe we have to say options equals like nil. So it's an optional parameter. Shoot, I'm pressing the wrong button. Let's try this again. All right, now it's actually working, except for we're still not getting the correct attributes. Weirdly enough. Some data except. It was supposed to be except these keys. Still not coming back correctly. Huh. Maybe we have to define it. Except. I don't know. Yeah, it's not showing up. All right. <clears throat> Let me just look this up real quick. As JSON Ruby only returns certain attributes. I must be doing something wrong. Oh, so here's what this guy said. Override as JSON and do a merge on the options. Oh, interesting. Oh, so this is what you'd say you would pass in the only option ID type name for us. It would be like ID. Actually, I don't even know if we want to return the email. We probably wouldn't in our API. Eventually, we should have like a username too. first name, last name. I guess that makes more sense. Because you wouldn't want your API returning someone's like private information, but it looks like this works. So now our users array only passes the attributes that we are expecting. It's perfect. Cool. So I think I'm happy with that. Though I think I do want to add a username. Because that's pretty standard in social media apps. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new terminal. And I'm going to run Rails G migration. Add username to users. And username is going to be a type string. Just like that, we're going to have a new username attribute on the user. And I'm going to migrate the database. And now let's go over to the models and the user.rb. And I'm actually going to add the username to this uniqueness validation so that we're going to validate both for uniqueness. And then we can also return the username in the options that we return instead of the email. It's going to be ID, first name, last name, and username. Perfect. So now let's go and try to create a new user by making a post request to the same URL and then passing in the body. And obviously we need to change the email and password to something different. Oh, and also we're going to include a new username parameter, which means in the user's controller, we have to permit it in the user params. Let me come down here. We're going to permit username. And now we should be good to go. We're just going to need to change the email, something else. And then also let's pass in the username. Cool user. Also, we're probably going to want to do some sort of like check to make sure that the characters are valid for username. Because that's what all the social medias usually do, but we can get to that later. So for right now, making this post request should work successfully. I'm going to do it, and boom, just like that, we get the result, which is the created user with these attributes. So now I want to get into authentication. So if we were to add a new route in our app, maybe something like a post route, and now we're going to be creating posts for a, for a user, I want to make that secure and like, I just don't know how we would do that. We would just, we could pass in like the username and password through the request, but that seems like a bad way to do it because it's just like risky. You're, you're putting that data out there. So it might be a better idea to get a JSON web token. And then we could have the user sign in with their email and password, and then just return some token. That's like temporary that they can use to authorize, like authorize as themselves. So I think that's what we're going to do. And also that was requested in the video. So I'm just going to look that up. JSON web token Ruby. And I'm going to see how we can do this. I remember when I was first starting to code, I was applying for a junior Ruby on Rails position. And that was their coding challenge was to like build this whole API app and add a JSON web token. And it was the hardest thing. I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. But I think I'll sh I should be able to handle it now, a few years later, now that I've worked at like so many jobs and yeah, I've just already done like a lot of, although I've never done this since, but I just think it'll be easier. With an example, JWT could look like this. It's basically just a hash of random stuff. So the first part, the header contains information about the algorithm. So it might include this once you do hash it and then you like keep going. Okay. JWT versus other authentication methods. It's token based authentication. So first of all, the user would sign in. So that's what I was saying. Then the server authenticates the user stores a session and returns a session ID stored as a cookie in the browser. The client sends the cookies along with its subsequent subsequent request to the server. Server inspects the session information presented and if valid authenticates the user and returns the requested information to the client. Oh, they're saying that's session based. So that's kind of what we could do if they're going to authenticate and then use a session. It returns a session ID stored as a cookie. Hmm. Oh yeah. So it says the authentication state is handled on the server. All tokens are managed on the client. Yeah, see that makes sense. It's like more secure. Somebody can't just hijack your session if we're just storing that in like the cookies or whatever.
It's still crazy. Okay, so I guess there is a JWT model in Ruby. Or not a model, a JWT gem. But it, this looks very similar to how my app is already structured right now. And you have to build a wrapper around the gem. So you just build like a class that has an encode and decode method. Which will allow us to encode data and then also decode it. And we can also use it in our Rails controller. All right, before action. So you have a before action where you authenticate from the token. I see, I see. It honestly seems pretty straightforward. So shout out to this author. He's He did a very good job of explaining the whole thing. I think we can do this. So the first step is adding the gem. I'm gonna look up what's the current what's the current version we should use for JWT. Or honestly, we could just do like a bundle add JWT and it would get the latest version. Bundle add JWT just like this in the terminal. All right now we have that library. And yeah, this guy's article seems even better than the documentation. Like a little bit easier to understand. So the next thing we could do is build a wrapper. So we're going to put it in the lib JSON web token. All right, I'm going to copy that code. Let's go over to the lib folder. I'm going to make sure I'm putting it in the lib folder and not the tasks, although I don't think it matters. So I'll create a new file, JSON web token .rb. I'll define it right here. It looks like actually our secret is coming from the secret key base, which I don't know if we have that defined yet. Let's go and check it out. So to, to test it out, we can just go into our Rails console, Rails C, and we can try to get this. Oh, so I guess we do have a secret key base. Cool. Although it says, oh, secrets is deprecated in favor of credentials. So let's try to switch it out for credentials credentials.dig secret key base. So that does the same thing. So we'll use this instead because it's going to be like what you're supposed to use now. And then we have this encode method, which has an expiration date. And then here we encode it and we can also decode it. So it looks pretty straightforward. Let's see if we can access this class because I've had some problems in the past with putting classes in the lib folder and not being able to access them. Oh, but it looks like it works now. So we can encode like, I'm just gonna put a simple message. <clears throat> oh, whoops, we already encoded it. So if I have like a hello world message, this is what we get back, this is our token. And we can actually decode it by running the same thing, but with decode. And I think you pass in the key Oh yeah, just like that. And we get our message back and also the expiration. That's pretty cool. All right, so now let's get into setting it up in our app. Although we don't really have a controller that needs to be secured right now. So that's where we might get into the next thing, which was the posts. So like since we're building a social media app, we should have some sort of model for the posts. So I'm gonna generate that right now. So I'm going to go in the terminal, I'm going to run Rails G model post, and a post can have like a caption. Let's do, I want to do an image, but I don't know how that works with APIs. Like how can you send an image? So maybe for right now, let's just do an image URL, because we could set an image URL pretty easy. And we can also do like a body, which is type text, I think. Oh, and then the last thing would be a user belongs to to set up the association to users. Just like that, we could be good. Let's run a RelsDB migrate to migrate the database. And boom, now we have posts. So I'm going to go back in the code and I'm going to create a post controller in our controllers folder. So I'm going to do a new file, call it post underscore controller.rb. 
Inside of this, we're going to have a class post controller, which is going to inherit from application controller. And then we're going to have some actions inside of it. So we can start off with a create action for creating the post. And then we definitely want to secure this because we're going to need like some user. So I'm just going to kind of add like pseudo code for right now. Find user, create post with user. Oh, and by the way, we need to go to the models real quick to set up the association between the post. So post belongs to user, but user needs to also know about post. You have to set like as many posts, just like that. And now the association is set between these two, which means inside of the post controller, once we have the user model, we can do a user.post create and then pass in the params for the post. So it's actually defined a post params method like we did on the user's controller. We'll add a private section and then I'll create a method post params. And then we're going to get the params. We're going to require like a key, like just a namespace that basically. And then we can permit the attributes so like caption image URL, just all the things that we defined on that migration before. Image URL, oh, body. So yeah, this is what we're looking for for the post. So this is essentially what would happen, but we need to somehow find that user model using JWT, which means I think we'd have an authenticate method to get the token to the, so we can like have the token on the API. Using JWT's in Rails controller. So it says he's just gonna put it in the application controller. So which would mean like the whole app gets locked down. So you have to log in. And then you could just skip the before action on different controllers that you want to skip it on. Alright, I think that makes sense. I'll just copy that code, go to the application controller, drop it in right here. So we have like this whole setup where it's always going to be trying to authenticate. Now I think on the user's controller, we could skip that. We weren't expecting you to have an authenticated account to just create a user or list all the users. Although eventually we might want to lock those down. And now it says we need an authentication controller to which users can send requests and like sign in basically. So let's create that. I'm just going to copy this code and we're going to create a new a new file in the controllers folder. Let's call this authentication controller to RB. Boom, just like this and we have this login route, which I'm guessing is a post request. So also let's make sure we have the routes. So in the config routes to RB we need to have routes for both the post controller and the authentication controller. So for the post controller, it's pretty easy. We can just do a resources post only create. But for the authentication controller, I think we just have to define like a post slash. We can call that whatever we want, and it will just tell that it will say that it goes to. So you set the to parameter, and then specify the controller in action. We do authentication outside the login action. So like this, the path doesn't really matter, but the two is what's important. I think that should be good. It's funny because he didn't even show, I guess he did show the routes down here. Finally. All right, well, I want to test the login. So it's, it's supposed to return the token that we can use to authenticate for the other actions. So let's try out the auth. That's the first thing we'll do, which means oh, we can actually keep these top two keys because the email and password is how we're going to sign in. Although I think in that controller, it's not, it's not namespaced with the user. Yeah. See, it's just for the login. They're looking for username and password. So we don't want it to be namespaced. We got to delete the, also, we're not going to pass email. I guess we're just going to pass the username and password. So I'm going to hide the ones that we're not using. And then I have to remove this user namespace. 
to like take it out of the array. Also, I wonder if I can just delete these other keys. Okay. All right, this is how we're gonna sign. Password, username. That's it. We're gonna do username, password, put the username on top. <laughs> now we're gonna target the slash auth route. That's where we're gonna make our request and I'm expecting a token to be returned. When we do it, it says uninitialized constant JWT. Oh, I think because I added it on the second terminal, we actually need to restart our rail server so it knows about that class. So I restarted the server and let's try this again. Sending the request and we got unauthorized. Oh, well, I think I see why because this password doesn't look right. <laughs> our password is just set to like, isn't that the, isn't this wrong? Oh. Wait, is when you switch it around, we somehow like switched. This is the password. Wait, I'm so confused. I think that's the password and the bottom one's the username. Oh wait, no, it's not. The top one is the username, but the password is just wrong for some reason. I think our password is supposed to be just password123. Let's try this again. It's another request. We actually got the token back. That's insane. So now we have this JSON web token right here that we can use to go and authenticate with the other routes. I don't even know where do we put it. So look, if you try to make a request without the token, it just says unauthorized. So let's try to do that right now. Let's try to make a request to the post controller and create the post. Although right now there's like nothing in here. We can just do a render JSON. Post was created. Although there's no code to do that yet, but I just want to test the auth the authorization. So if we target slash post, and then we just put in some keys like the different things they want, like the caption. I love posting. And then we could just do a body truth about social media. I don't even know. Obviously, this would be like a big block of text. Oh, wait, you can actually put a file? Oh, see, I didn't know that. Big block of text. All right, let's try to make our first post. So I send the request, and we actually get decode error, which is interesting. Although we should have got error unauthorized. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't get the unauthorized. Oh, wait, that's only for the authentication controller. In the application controller, they actually would just return decode error. But I think he must have been posting. Oh, he's posting to the login path. So that's like if you, it didn't log in successfully. All right. So I guess I'm a little bit past that part. Now he said, let's keep this token and try accessing a product resource. And I guess this is how you're supposed to do it. We have to put it in authorization header. Weirdly, so let's go to headers. Let's create that authorization. And over here, I guess we have to add like what bearer? And then put the key. It's so confusing. Wait, <laughs> let me look at this again. We're supposed to have bearer and then the actual token that we got returned. Which I don't even, I don't know if I have it anymore. I'm confused. Maybe it is just this key. Oh, and I wonder if that slash is, was important. Probably not. Let's add the key. Let's send the request. It actually was successful. What happens if we disable that authorization header? It says decode error. All right, so I guess this is how you do it. You just have to set it in an authorization key, which that might've been what was messing me up last time, like a few years ago when I was trying to do JSON web token, but it looks like this works.
Yeah, so we now have JSON Web Token in our app. It's kind of tricky because you have to store any authorization header. But I guess that's not too bad. So now let's add in the code for creating the post somehow. Which I don't know how we're going to do that. We have this authentication or authenticate route. But the thing is, in the post controller, I want to get that user now. And I don't know how I could find it. Unless I almost. Well, this isn't a private action, so I can't even do that. But I need to somehow like get the token. Maybe we can just set this. We can set at user to a variable in our app, which would mean this would run, it would set it, and then we should have access to it in the create action. I don't know if that's the best way to do this. Let's try it out. So we could do at user post create. And we could do the check if it was created. Let's just return. Actually, let's set the post to a variable. And we can return that as JSON. Otherwise, we're going to render just like a message. Creation creating post. And then we can even put the errors again. Post.errors. Full messages. So that should work. Let's try this again. Let's do. We can just do the same post again. Now we're getting param is missing or empty. Oh, because it's going through the post param. So now it's expecting the namespace on these keys. You have to do like the post and then put it in the array, which will namespace the parameters. And now when I press create or when I press send, it actually is creating the post. And this could create like multiple different posts, as you can see. This is awesome. So already we have JSON web token. We have an API only app. Like what else is there to even add? And I know there is things because I had a whole list of things from the guy who commented on my video. Uh, I think this is pretty good. Like this might be good for the first episode. We created an API only app and we added a JSON web token. Anything else that we can do, I'll probably just put in, a pre in um, the next video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun for me because I haven't done this for years since my since that first coding challenge that I was I had to do this. So I hope this helped you guys. Also shout out to that guy's uh, post that helped me a lot. Just this article explaining JWT. I feel like after that I'm very comfortable with it now. Yeah, I'm happy with this. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video.